This is not an auto review. I'm actually at the Airtel booth and there's so much innovation happening here that we need to showcase it. But the first question I have for a very yeah. special gentleman, Sharat, what a pleasure Good to have to you, you on the nice, show. Nice to meet you as well. Sharat, what is a Mahindra EV doing at an Airtel booth? Look, so this is a connected vehicle solution, right? Mm -hmm. Or connected car solution. Mm -hmm. Because there's a SIM card inside it, which is also connected to cloud analytics. Mm -hmm. It becomes an IoT device, mm -hmm. which gets full power of uh, electronic IoT device, right? Mm -hmm. So apart from locations, if you want to do streaming services on it, if you want to take control, know remotely know the location, yeah. controls over it, you want to lock the car, uh, you want to do a safe valet service, all those can be enabled. Very interesting. And, and you are working with, as the big boss uh, at Airtel's business operation, you are working with a bunch of OEMs on stuff like this. That's are right. these exclusive sort of arrangements? So look, you know, we, we provide them telecom infrastructure and associated solutions. In some cases, it could be exclusive. Some cases, because we provide better services, they yeah. are with us. Right? Yeah, it's non-binding. I'm going to really pick your brains right. and we'll also burn some calories indeed. as we walk indeed, indeed. across this massive booth. And there are certain interesting things, right? Like you have AI-driven networks. AI right. is a big focus area a AI at the IMC. Yeah? Precisely. Looks, if you look at current times, uh, when it comes to infrastructure, you have to use AI. At network infrastructure level, at the JNI AI level, uh, in, the, in terms of making it possible for customers to use AI, yeah. in terms of creating productivity in your organization, pretty much everywhere it is utilized, especially in the business that we are in. Mm -hmm. So when you want to provide a fraud prevention solution, Correct. you have to use network AI. Let's actually see what right. this solution is all about, right? Because this one's about yeah. critical operations. you got fraud prevention is up ahead as That's well. Right. And all of these lovely little booths are showing us critical infrastructure. That's right. So, uh, ATIL Secure represents our security solutions that we provide. Now, cybersecurity is an interesting business. This is a business where people pay you for nothing to happen. <laughs> I, this is in the spirit of all candid. I'm so glad right. you're being candid about it, but or prevent you, uh, uh, pay you pay to prevent you. something from yeah. happening as so well. So, they want you to prevent, they want you to detect, and they want you to remediate in time. Absolutely. Ideally, you want to prevent everything. And be one step ahead. One step attacker. ahead. Yeah. And which also means you have to look at the whole infrastructure in totality. And cybersecurity is also a derived business, right? So when you have network, you have network security. You have cloud, you need cloud security. You have endpoint, you need endpoint security. You have AI, so you need AI security. Tomorrow you're going to have quantum computing, so you also need quantum safe, quantum Spot secure on. solutions. Spot on. Right? And, and, and the cloud is also a huge element of that. I see Indeed. that there's a cloud, it, it is. a cloud piece as well. When you say AI-ready cloud, are you talking right. about AI-ready data centers? What's the what's the backstory here? Yeah, so if you look at cloud, they use utilize data centers. So we have launched uh, Airtel Cloud, which is a sovereign cloud with both data plane and control plane within the country. It has telco grade reliability because if you manage critical infrastructure, yeah. you look for 5.9 kind of reliability. That's what we provide here. It reduces your total cost of ownership significantly. Our assessment is 20 to 40 percent. Okay. From by bringing in these other properties. Yeah, because see, we have our own data centers. We use our own network, which is a significant cost because when you're using cloud, you also upload data. You yes. also download data. Absolutely. Which is called, you know, egress and ingress part yeah, of it, yeah. right? And that involves cost. But as a network provider, you can super optimize it. Plus, you can provide true quality of service because you're controlling end-to-end. -end. In our case, what we have done is, data residency was given, you know, but even control plane is within the country. So the whole orchestration part, management of workload is within the country, which gives you business resilience, de-risks your business. Shad, you know, when everyone talks about Airtel, from the consumer or enterprise side, these are not things we naturally associate with right. the brand. I know there's a lot of uh, the big bucks really involved over here. But I think at IMC, this is an eye-opener for a lot of us. Right. It's a revelation. You also mentioned fraud detection, right? That's right. So is that to do also largely with these spam callers and, and you know, it, all this sort of stuff is. that's happening? There's a it lot is. of AI being used out there as well. Look, so spam detection and spam prevention is part of it. So is fraud prevention. And what we do is very, very unique. So if you look at, if you're an Airtel subscriber, you would typically see many a times the call is flagged as a spam call. We actually use network AI and we look at 250 parameters on a real-time basis. Okay. And we flag a call as spam based on 
the behavior of the number, the device, and other things. I think that's right? the demo that, that's that right. everyone's been flocking to here at that, the that, IMC. That's right. And then comes the fraud uh, prevention part of it. So many a times you will get a compromised link. It comes on SMS, which is a S7 network. Yes. But when you click on it, it goes to the IP network and you end up at a compromised website where you could, you know, fraudulent activities could happen. We totally prevent that. What we are offering, not just our mobile subscribers, but even broadband subscribers, independent of which network you're on, we make sure that we protect you from fraudulent websites. So we've combined those, those two and we are protecting our customers. On the enterprise side, through secure critical infrastructure, we're yeah. protecting our business customers. Right. Like recently we won uh, Indian Railway SOC bid, which was a massive bid, uh, where we are protecting entire infrastructure of Indian Railways right. uh, through the SOC services that we mm -hmm. provide. You know, this is the IMC piece and always an education for me to come to an Airtel booth and I learn so right. much every time. But just understanding and picking your brain as someone who's leading multiple businesses, five right. or six top businesses for a company, and you're an industry veteran. It's been over two right. decades. You've seen three, how, three decades. <laughs> I was, I was, maybe I was, I was giving out my age there. <laughs> but in these three decades, Sharat, you've seen how the tech and telecom cybersecurity space right. has evolved. Now you're here in, in India, in Gurgaon. Uh, how do you see the tech revolution shaping up, especially in light of what's been announced today at IMC? The energy, the vibe. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to say, but what is the real picture? Is 6G genuinely coming in time? Is AI, are we at the heart of the revolution or can India be left behind? How do you, how do you view it right. from your career lens? Look, uh, if you had asked me this question 10 years ago, I would have said there's huge correlation between broadband penetration and GDP growth. And there have been numerous studies which show that when broadband penetration grows, yeah. companies' GDP, uh, countries' GDP goes up. In today's time, the same can be said for digital cloud and AI infrastructure. Correct. So it's not a surprise that many of the developed countries are putting huge focus on building AI infrastructure. That includes cloud infrastructure, the network infrastructure to support it, uh, the data platforms and language models. So it's not a coincidence, yeah. right? And uh, we are in the midst of it. We are fourth largest GDP in the world, right? Uh, hopefully soon becoming going. three. And uh, we have a very young population ready to contribute, one of the fastest growing countries. The digital infrastructure, the combination of cloud infrastructure, for example, the telecom infrastructure and the AI infrastructure mm -hmm. becomes the engine which powers productivity, which powers connectivity to the world, which powers the whole economy. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in short, I expect this to be robust enough to keep driving that growth. And that's where some of the issues related to sovereignty, owning the infrastructure, yeah. making sure that you have enough infrastructure to connect people with quality of service becomes very, very important. Does the competition and innovation in the space sort of concern you sometimes or does it spur you forward? Because we've seen how telcos have really been ramping up, innovate in tech. Now there's the AI wave, right. there's so much more to come. You're talking about infrastructure. How does that competition really spur you to move on? Look, for us, what spurs us to move on uh, or go forward are the customers. So we are a supremely customer-obsessed, customer-success-oriented company. And uh, we see that there is massive consumption of the services that we provide. And we want to make sure that we, as long as you keep providing that, you'll stay ahead of the competition, right? And. Uh, that's what we actually focus on in terms of creating the right customer experience. Right. We are a telecom service providers, but you know, if you look at new definition of telecom, yeah. today it has gone on, it's no longer just mobile services or broadband services. It's about creating that whole digital infrastructure that connects people. We are more an experience provider rather than just a service provider. And that drives us and you know, over three decades, Intel has been in business. We have gone from 2G to 5G. We were the first to launch 5G. Yes. We'll continue to invest in right technologies as long as it makes them. Are the, are the lines really blurring between what a telco does and a tech company does in, in terms of 2025 and the way forward? L look, both have their own value to bring and it's an ecosystem that has to come together to deliver some value, right? Technology companies have their own role. Telcos have a unique role and there is a place where some level of overlap will be there. But there's also a lot of scope for the companies to collaborate with each other to create value 
that ultimately delivers value to your customers. Shal Sena, what an absolute pleasure to have this conversation. Thank you for walking us around L and joking us on Tech360. We Re really enjoy talking to you, Ayush. Likewise, thank you, Shal. Thanks.